It's about sound link flex speaker so far. I really like. But this could be the biggest test of all time because <sighs> you've said, eh, it's our, oh, we've seen it again, it's now cheaper speakers. It's not a big deal, is it? £149.50 quid and it won that one. What about similarly priced portable speakers? So, about $149, £149. Then we've got the Marshall Emberton. $129 is actually a bit cheaper. £129, $149. So a bit cheaper in the UK, about the same in the USA. Mini Rig Mark III. Can't see it at the moment in the US Amazon, but it's about £139 in the UK. So all about £140 $140 mark. All portable speakers. Is this the, the moment that we... Ah, the Bose sound. Oh, it's overpriced, isn't it, Bose? What do you expect? Oh. So how do they compare? You, on paper. On paper, that's a proper. This is not about gassing M4 40 watts. <laughs> Probably peak of the peak. This is a real 40 watt speaker. We're guessing 20 watts. And that is a 20 watt speaker. So, it's looking good at this point for the Mini Rig Mark III. Also, note, a very different form factor. Cylindrical. What does that mean? Well, you can play it either way. On axis, or you could have it that way. That way up, of course, it's a true. 360 degree speaker, all the audiophiles out there saying, I love my sound power and it's got to sound the same from all angles. Of course, they're loving that already. And that's the thing, remember, it is tuned uh, out of the box to be listened that way up because it's got quite um, a sharp high end. If you go into the app, there is an option to set it to studio mode. What's that, Al? That is what they call on axis mode. If you're in a studio and you're serious, I guess that's the point, studio sound. But to me, that sounds really, really boring. So I'm pushing, I'm going to record this on axis because that's how I like to listen to it. Not least because I normally play it with the subwoofer. I'm going to leave that, uh, the high end as it is. To me, it sounds a bit more exciting that way. And I'm pushing the bass. I'm going halfway up of the sliders for the upper bass and deeper bass. Well, I think it's around 80 hertz. Pushing that all the way up. That's how we're going to be comparing the Mini Rig Mark III. Just remember though, you've got loads of options, not least you can play it with a separate subwoofer that Mini Rig do, and that will transform it. Not much else you can do with the Marshall Emberton. It's all about the form factor. Now, we're talking about 360 degree speakers, 360 degree when you play it that way up. This does have driver, front driver, full range driver, full range driver, front and back. It is a 360 degree speaker. It will sound kind of the same each way. It's just weird to me that I believe the right driver on the front, uh, I believe it's that way around, is actually the left channel and it's the other way around on the other, on the, on the rear one. It, it, that kind of seems weird to me. However, I do prefer playing it that way on you think, oh yeah, it must play it that way and you've got nice stereo. No, it doesn't sound quite right. So it's a 360 spread. It's not going to be advantageous in these on axis testing. Just remember, if you're gonna listen, if, you're, if all you ever do is listen to your speaker from behind, you, you'll get the Emberton. Or if you're moving about, and you, you'll get the Emberton. Uh, all things being equal, but it may not all be equal. Remember, it's mono. It's mono, it's stereo, it's pseudo stereo. <laughs> they do these crazy things. Uh, Marshall Emberton, some of it I think is just to do with marketing and maybe they would be better off leaving it. However, there is some suit, there's summing left and right and some psychoacoustics psycho going on to make it sound mm, a bit different to your ears and that may be enough to differentiate that speaker. Got one woofer on the right side of the Flex passive radiator front, passive radiator back in terms of those drivers. It's a big old 73 millimeter driver on the Mark III. Remember, you, it's a mini rig. I'm not going to go into that in this uh, video, but if you've never heard of mini rig before, it's about the modular system. Part of the price you pay is to have the the possibilities of what you can do with that modular system. They do a mini and they do the subs and you can daisy chain and do all sorts of fancy things. You can, these are, these play seriously a wired and they have a high gain, low gain mode, which you can select with its on off button. So it, that's a serious speaker and it has other options other than you're gonna hear in the straight on axis uh, testing. But it's a 73 millimeter, it's 54 millimeter with a pair of 50 millimeters. No passive radiator, obviously, but you can get the sub, but it will double your money. Two passive radiators, uh, two passive radiators. Let's get straight in. I'm going to do this at around 66% for simplicity and trying to keep me, some of these videos a bit shorter. 
where I've already done a serious review. If you go back to my original Soundlink Flex video, you'll hear it low, medium, and max volume. In this one, for now, I'm gonna do max and volume also in the end of this video. But, but in between the, uh, the moderate listening and the high volume listening, if, you, if we're gonna call that high volume, around 65% all three speakers, but normalized and loud as match watch for the volume. I've actually recorded these at, which actually I might as well tell you now before we go on. Matching the volumes uh, means the support you've got speaker is 60%, 65%. We're already 80%, bear that in mind. But of course, it's at a disadvantage because one driver is firing backwards and I'm recording, listening on axis. That's the point of this test. Have a listen. Ya vi que estás aquí. Tan cerquita de mí. Y me hacía falta. Porque la última vez que vine, tú no estabas. Baby. Vamos a tomar toda la noche, mujer. Te invito a bailar hasta el amanecer. No quieres jugar y no quieres perder. Vamos a bailar, quiero verte mover. Lento. Hasta que el lanzo nos junte en nuestro cuerpo. Lento. Yeah. Vamos a tomar toda la noche, mujer. Te invito a bailar hasta el amanecer. Tú quieres jugar y no quieres perder. Vamos a bailar, quiero verte mover. Lento. Hasta que el lanzo nos junte en nuestro cuerpo. Muy lento. Más tarde vamos a enloquecer. Y si me dejas, tú serás mi mujer. Cuando se nota que me quieres comer. Por eso sé que vamos a enloquecer. Más tarde vamos a enloquecer. Y si me dejas, tú serás mi mujer. Cuando se nota que me quieres comer. Por eso sé que vamos a enloquecer. Ya vi que estás aquí. Tan cerquita de mí. Y me hacía falta. Porque la última vez que vine, tú no estabas. Baby. Dime qué quieres, sin reproche. Que se ahora te la desabroche. Vamos a lo oscuro, hasta las doce. Ay, sí que tú me conoces. Suavecito, vamos hasta abajo. Around 65% volume, just as an indicator. The original track you can see in green is quite striking. The Mini Rig Mark III in orange, big peak around the 300 hertz, but it's a Soundlink Flex that has the biggest mid bass where the Mark III is actually dipping and rolling off quite steeply. Suddenly, when you get below 60 hertz, the Mark III starts showing its bigger, deeper bass. Marshall Emberton just has a thin upper bass rolling off around the 80 hertz mark. And if you look against the original track, it's only the Emberton that has that big peak, about 1700 hertz to about 2800 hertz, which isn't on the original track, and the other two speakers are not producing. The Soundlink Flex actually mirrors that original track quite well. It's only past 10 kilohertz where both the Emberton and the Soundlink Flex have a bit of a peak, and the Mark III is actually having a steep roll off. That's nine kilohertz already. See, Emberton is a bit different. You've got to remember, all, all three of these speakers are actually a bit different. That's modular, that's pseudo surround, 360, and that's just a straight on-axis mono speaker. 
So you've got to bear that in mind, how you're going to listen to it down the road. These are on axis comparisons. It's going to come off um, a little bit disadvantaged because one driver is firing backwards. So that's why I'm already at 80%. However, when I'm listening like that, which is how I personally do my listening most of the time, the, the vocals are a bit distant and the, the pseudo surround is not really working for me. It's coming over a bit high pitched. It's a bit unfocused, but it's doing that pseudo thing. So it's, there's a shimmer and it's all kind of cloudy, but it can be pleasant, but it's not in any way um, an analytical listen because there isn't the focus there. Um, and to me, anyway, uh, vocals are a bit distant sounding. That's not the case with the Flex, which is the warmest sounding speaker on this table. For me, the, it, look, be fair, I have uh, placed the Mini Rig Mark III on axis. I pushed the bass, but I haven't adjusted the highs. It is tuned to be listened that way on. But in the real world, when I listen, if, when I, if I tame those highs, I didn't like them at first, but now if I tame them, it loses a bit of excitement. But in these A-B comparisons, and that's the problem when you're doing a quick A-B, something that works in the long run, such as, for me, for excitement, and depending, depending on the tracks you listen to, works in the long run for a long listen, doesn't work in the short ABs because you're latching on to, to, to some differences and just making, oh, there's a bit more bass and there's a bit, that's a bit higher. But over a long listen, those differences will even out and you'll just hear what you like and don't like. But it's the nature of the beast. It is a quick AB, but I'm gonna point out that's how I leave it like that. And for me, that works over a longer listen. But it is clinical sounding and that is warmer sounding. And I do prefer the sound of that. Obviously, double my money, add the subwoofer to that took in a, a whole different ball game. But for traveling, this is still holding up against speakers in the same league in terms of the price. It is the, the uh, mid bass where the flex dominates. So it rolls off rapidly below 60 Hertz, but in any of these speakers, are you really gonna hear that? Of course, if you had the sub, you would. So the Emberton, you know, it's, it's a niche speaker. A lot of people do like it. And it's, it's, it's just going to be something you like or you don't like. Um, it's possible you can. <laughs> it's possible you could be in between, but you, then you'd have a million other options. So you've got to like the way it delivers its pseudo surround. You've got to want a 360 degree speaker, and you want something small and chunky. I don't even like the multi-function buttons. Some people love it, um, especially turning the speaker. You know, it's on and off is a long hot push down. You get a meaty old turn on sound. Boom, boom. But then, do when I'm turning that off and go, hold it down, it's easy to go. Oh, I'm doing the volume up, the volume down or the pause and play. I find that a bit fiddly. I know other people are loving it. Now, it, I don't know if you can see, it's so wobbly, it's not even turning off. I wanted to turn it off. You've got to be right on. No, I don't know. Now I've turned it off. I do find that um, a bit awkward in the real world. I am liking the Flex. Uh, I would declare the Flex still the winner here. But it's not the winner in the real world when I'm using that as a modular system. But I'm gonna quick, quickly pick something up. Um, one speaker, a quick listen. I know I'm gonna get a lovely warm bass. It doesn't sound terrible with, with anything. And some of these speakers need careful uh, genre matching. Kind of go to maximum volume, where you'd expect 40 watts to start pulling away. Everything about it scares me Everything about it scares me
So, Mini Rig Mark III, by far the loudest. Indeed, seven decibels up on the Soundlink Flex, and over eight decibels up on the Marshall Emberton. And you can see the Mini Rig Mark III in white there, just how much louder it really is. And yet, still, by the time you hit 80 hertz, the Soundlink Flex actually has a bit more of bass. The Mark III only taking over again below 60 hertz. Marshall Emberton, very peaky. You look between two kilohertz and the four kilohertz again. That peak mirrored with the dip at one kilohertz. That's not pretty to listen to. The Soundlink Flex keeping some sort of balance. It's not pushing the highs and it's retaining a decent amount of bass. Even now, it's still at maximum volume, has the most mid bass of these three speakers. It just doesn't have the ultimate headroom of the Mini Rig Mark III. That's not a great listen, and it doesn't even go loud, the Emberton. The Mark III for me um, is a bit thin, but let's be fair, I was, I'm going for maximum volume. I haven't tamed those highs, which you can do in the app, or indeed use their studio mode. That'll tame it, but to me it sounds a bit boring, I don't really like their studio mode. But the Flex holds on to the bass, doesn't push the mids and the highs just to go louder, and it's more listenable. Doesn't mean to say any of them are, some, are, are a pleasure to listen to at maximum volume. They are not, and that's certainly going to go a lot louder. If that's all you want to do, you're going to play it outdoors, that may be your guy. And remember, you can always add another mini rig or have them wired, have them wireless. It works both ways. Daisy chain that whole load of other speakers, add the sub, add the mini. You've got a whole load of options. You've got to factor that in. When you spend money on the mini rig, it's about the modular system and the multitude of options. Uh, but in the real world, if you're only picking up one speaker, it may well be the Bose. It's not going to go as loud. And if you're indoors, um, it may work better because the bass is more satisfying. Only when we get below that 60 the 60 hertz mark does the mini rig as usual come in. That's where it's at its weakest spot in deep bass, but of course you've got enough mid bass and upper bass uh, to keep you going. In terms of mid bass, I mean, it's not that far off the Mark III. The Mark III wins with the upper bass and the deeper bass, but it's just the overall balance. And that's, it's easy to say, well, it's got more bass. Obviously it's going a lot louder. So what's the actual balance? And that's the other thing. The balance between the bass, the mids, and the highs. All these speakers have some bass, it's just that they're being smothered by the mids and the highs, then they become shrieky. If you just reduce the mids and the highs, it's not going loud, but the balance is different, it becomes more listenable. So it's not just about how loud is it going. It's, it's about what is the, the actual balance between the bass, the mids, and the highs. So, is there anything oh, I've forgotten to tell you? We talked about price, it's a surprisingly small battery at 11 watt hours in the Soundlink Flex. We know it's it's a big thing. We talked about the modular system, but also about they give you a decent old battery. You get a decent battery in life out of these speakers. It's a 29 watt hours uh, battery. It could be 24 watt hours and it seems to be, or 28 watt hours. I've seen different teardowns with different batteries in it. But either way, obviously it's a, bit, a lot bigger the battery, than the battery on the Soundlink Flex. Only the mini rig giving you its order file credentials will give you Aptex. Um, obviously, that's going to make a difference when you're using, you know, a decently recorded tracks. And, of course, you're using a full system. When you listen to that, for me personally, as a 2.2 or a 4.2, it comes into its own, but it ain't cheap. But the point is, I've got the option of going 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, that's what it's about, those options. But maybe because it's uh, modular and a little bit fiddly, I don't play it anywhere near as much as I should do. Bluetooth 5, Bluetooth 5, 4.2. <coughs> you cannot pair. To the, I mean, with all the other problems I talked about with the Emerton, you can't even uh, pair two of them. Why? Why can't you do stereo pairing? I mean, it, it, 10 pound Chinese speakers gives us some uh, stereo pairing. Why can we not get it on the Emberton? Not only, we talk about, oh, I need an auxiliary, I need an auxiliary, I cannot listen to a speaker without an auxiliary input. You've got two of them. Not only have you got two auxiliaries, they, they work as both an input and an output. So talk about, there's so many options that you really need to have a read up on the Mini Rig. You can indeed even use the Mini Rig Mark III as a power bank. It comes with, I know it's a barrel charger and a lot of us are not that happy, but they have their reasons for going with a barrel charger. And it, it does in fact have the USB at the end and it can be used uh, to power another device. It is an input and output. Only the Soundlink Flex can be used as a speakerphone in terms of the weight. The Mini Rig Mark III 550s actually the the, the least heavy, the lightest on the table, 587 for the Soundlink Flex, 700 grams for the Marshall Emberton. And in terms of taking up room in your, your rucksack, 
just 565 centimeters cubed compared to 720 centimeters cubed, 769. So it's the lightest, takes up the least space in a rucksack, yet it will go the loudest, albeit a bit of a screech fetch, but it's but all the other options that I talked about. Only the Soundlink Flex will float when dropped in water and only the Mini Ring Mark III is not even IPX7. Look, that's, it's not about floating. Um, they're putting their design and their research and development into other areas. All reasonable. This makes change three speakers on the table, all reasonable for uh, Bluetooth latency when streaming. For me, in my testing, 50 milliseconds, 60 milliseconds, 80 milliseconds, they're all below the, they're all on or below the 80 milliseconds I declare as my cutoff point between noticing and not noticing lip sync issues. So there you go. That's a roundup of similarly priced uh, speakers. Still holding up the sound, the Bose. <laughs> you work for sound cool, don't you? No, I don't. The Bose Soundlink Flex still holding up. As I said, it is reasonable. It's not cheap, 149 quid, especially if you buy a pair of them, but it's decent value for a travel speaker. And even if you just listen to it at home, just know the mids are lacking, the highs are not great quality, but the overall balance is pleasing to the ear. And actually it's not, we talked about it, it's not the most accurate speaker in the world, but do you know what? It's not a million miles from being accurate. It can, it, it does, it does maintain the overall signature uh, of an, any original track you're playing. So that's the reason why I mean, uh, this is not a speaker I've ever really got on with or listened to. That's the speaker I love, but because of its many, 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 many options, if you're only ever going to buy one of them, then you've got, then you've got more to think about. And indeed, if you're only going to buy one speaker, for me, for me, it would be the Soundlink Flex. But then if you're going outdoors, you may, a screech fest may sound reasonable to you. Um, it's not, no, I don't want to be too nasty. It's not an absolute screech fest. We've heard screech fests before, but to me, the balance, they, Mini Rig have deliberately gone for volume over retaining bass. For me, at least give us another mode where it can retain bass. I know it's got limiters and it can't handle that much bass, but that, I don't like the balance, albeit I've, uh, I've, I'm listening on Axis and I'm not using their studio mode. So maybe it's studio mode then, how is their balance mode? What are you talking about? Well, I don't know. I, I, don't, I find the, their balance, the studio mode a bit boring. <laughs> I think this is a nice speaker. Still retains its value at 149 pound. Still sounds better than the budget options. Hope you got something out of this video. I'll see you in another video. I got their life. I got their life. Ain't a project wife, got my logic right, cause I'm not your type. I got their life. I got their life. Sorry, my honey, get it right. I'ma just live my life. I ain't about that. I ain't about that life. Uh.